Hey guys, and welcome back to Watsy Obsession, where we cover the most intriguing Watsy Keys topics. I start, mo I start most of my videos out with photos or videos of Bella and Cece and Shanann, because I think it's important to remember why so many people became obsessed with this case in the first place. That there were real victims, that were real people, and many of us have a sense that uncovering the whole truth is an important mission for these people. Or maybe it's for ourselves, because to see something like this, this devastating and horrendous, and just disgusting happening, happening to a family that we can relate to and these adorable, completely innocent little girls is a conundrum for the heart and mind that a lot of us don't want to try to reconcile or we just can't reconcile. And to talk about this together is okay. Fun fact, did you guys know, if there can be a fun fact about this, that Bella has a Facebook page it's called Lil Beamer. <laughs> That's so, such a cute name. She's so cute. Look at her. I remember hearing about that a long time ago and it completely slipped my mind. And I just came across that picture um, when I was doing some research recently. So Lil Beamer, Bella's Facebook page. Beautiful little soul. Everything in today's video is going to have a theme that brings all the different pieces together of, and this can be a hard topic to talk about, it can be a hard topic for people to listen to, so if you want to turn this off now, you can go ahead and definitely do that. The central theme is going to be um, things that happened at or were related to Survey 319 on the morning of Monday. August 13th, 2018, and it's really hard to believe that this terrible, tragic event happened almost three years ago. So if you'd like a little table of contents as to what is going to be contained in today's video, um, I'll give you a little preview. We are going to talk about um, some common things that Watts co-workers said when they were interviewed by law enforcement. Hey, now remember, N.K. is also one of his co-workers, technically. Um, we are going to look at the weather on that Monday and Tuesday. Now, for a long time, I've heard a few creators or people out there um, theorize or go so far as to say this was the weather in the beginning of that week in August in 2018 and it wasn't really coming together in my mind in a way that made that fact meaningful but I started doing some research on that and things got pretty interesting so I'm going to show you what I found. We're also going to look at some of the texts that Chris Watts sent that terrible Monday morning while he was at Survey 319 and we will look at the device he used to send some messages to record some pictures and data and we will look at that in conjunction with his normal habits of using his let's say work phone versus personal phone and see if you can draw some conclusions there for yourself. It's very interesting stuff. So, you know, when I was looking into my initial topic, which was going to be interviews with the Anadarko employees, I got really caught up in looking at the pictures of Rogan, Colorado. So you guys may know that Rogan is 4.3 miles down the road from Kingsburg, ah, that we see right there on the map. Um, and it would be the last little town you go through before turning up County Route 16 and heading up from what I understand to be a long dirt road that leads to the Survey 319 site. And geez, you know, look at some of these pictures. It really does, you know, give you the feeling that this is God's land. Like, 
that the heavens just open up right here. And I hope that gives some comfort knowing that that's where Bella and Shanann and Nico and Cece were. Well, I hate when people say laid to rest because that's not their resting place where they were laid temporarily. Um, you know, because it really does look like God's land. Except for this hotel here. Rogan has a current population of 432. This hotel here was one of the only large businesses, medium-sized businesses in town. Um, it's since been abandoned, and even the people of Rogan themselves refer to Rogan as a ghost town in the prairies. So this is um, Watkins Green operation here all of those cylinders so those are not oil tanks not that you would necessarily think that um but they, it's a similar shape so you know rogan colorado here's the takeaway lots of vast space for large things that do things for some kind of an industry okay so when we look at the um houses or facades in Rogan, you know, you see a lot of this kind of dilapidated, rundown, don't even know if it's inhabited right now. And then the listings that you do find, well, I should say even recent listings that you can find for Rogan are like this. You know, it's it's kind of like a three room, two bedroom ranch i think they called it very interesting place you know if <laughs> damn if he planned to you know do what he did that morning if that's how it all went down <sighs> really looking at these pictures and what is the round survey 319 again and really thinking about it and thinking about what that drive would have been like that morning you know uh -huh. It makes me think he may have done it. He may have done it all himself with others knowing what was going to happen or knowing about what happened after the fact. But when I look at it from this perspective, you know, I'm thinking he was totally there. He totally did the act and this was planned. But, as with many things, when you continue to look at them longer and you look at them from different angles and you look into them a little deeper, things are not always what they appear. And ideas and truths do change. So we'll see what comes of this. Ah, in the rest of this video today, and I hope you can join the live session at 8 o'clock. Thursday, if we July it, 29. We'll talk about everything I just discussed, the weather, and what Chris Watts' co workers had to say about things. So, next, let's take a look at the weather in or around Rogan or Keensburg on August 13th and August 14th of 2018. So, there's this idea. Um, I know I've heard Mia talk about it and Seeking the Truth with Dave. They're both great. I'm sure you guys have checked them out, but if you haven't, go see them. They have some great videos, great things to say. Um, there's this idea, and among others, that Shanann didn't actually die on, I guess it would be, you know, early Monday morning, okay, when she came home from Arizona based on a number of factors that include the weather and the way the ground over Shanann's shallow gravesite was discovered when it was found indicate that Shanann couldn't have possibly have died early that Monday morning when she got home. In fact, some people believe that based on a number of factors and oftentimes, not only, but the weather is a heavy factor 
in um, the development of that theory, you know, they say that she had to have been murdered on Tuesday or perhaps even Wednesday. I pulled historical weather data for the dates of August 13th and August 14th in 2018 in or near Rogan or Keensburg, Colorado. Let's take a look at Wonderground. So I assure you that on August 13th, you can check it out for yourself, there was no precipitation reported. So I'm not even going to show you that. <laughs> so when we look at August 14th, we see that there is a day without precipitation going from midnight to 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. and so on. And then you'll see at around 7 o'clock, there is a spike in the first blue line indicating precipitation. Now, this spike shows a total of 0.3 inches of precipitation, which of course was rain in August in Colorado, um, in that hour. And then you'll see another smaller spike that shows at about 8 o'clock some more precipitation, lighter precipitation, and that precipitation um, rendered a total of 0 0.05 inches in precipitation or rain, okay? So when you look at the next screenshot here, so I'm starting you off looking at hmm, 633. There was light rain. If you look all the way over the right-hand side, then at 636, there was heavy thunderstorms, but no precipitation. At 642, heavy thunderstorms, again, no precipitation. And then at 653, it just notes light rain, and that's when you get that 0.3 inches of precipitation. If you go over one, two, three columns to your left, you will discover that while that rain was happening, the wind was blowing at 38 miles per hour. It's pretty fast when it's raining. Um, if you go, and that's at 6.53 p.m. on Tuesday, August 14th. If you look at 6.42, the column, row, row, excuse me, right above 6.53, you'll notice that gusts were up to 53 miles per hour. So for those um, holding the opinion that the precipitation and significant wind would have disrupted Shanann's very shallow grave, um, are they right? They might be. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm still not sure about what to think about the idea that perhaps Shanann was not murdered early Monday morning after returning home from Arizona. When I first heard about these theories and, you know, the weather situation while it rained at Servi, so they ha she had to have been buried in that very, very shallow disrespectful grave after Monday I think for a long time I couldn't even hear it I was doing everything I could to process what I already knew and accept that this happened it's, oh for all the reasons that it's confusing to you and all of the reasons that people are still interested in this case anyhow I started looking into some other things um, <laughs> that have to do with this case over the past few months, and I came across the drone footage of Servi, and in my mind, I started to remember what Dave or Mia said about Shanann not being murdered early that Monday morning, and I thought, oh my God, <laughs> now this makes more sense than anything given what we know even given the evidence put forth through discovery so here is a screenshot of the disturbed earth in which was Shanann's temporary grave 
so disrespectful. And that grave was very shallow. Um, I've heard a few different entranges, and it might be in discovery. Um, I just, I haven't held on to that piece of information, but it's not much more than a foot. I think I read somewhere she was covered by eight inches of dirt. All right. So she was not discovered and taken home until Thursday. Or at least I go have an autopsy conducted. And she was murdered early Monday morning. And her body was put there early Monday morning. How could on that vast prairie wildlife not have you know, gotten to her remains? It, just being somebody who's followed true crime cases for most of my life, we know that people who are buried in much deeper graves are, you know, animals know that they're there and they're interested and they get to them within a few days. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Look at that smile on Bella's face. She was so happy for her dad to give her a big hug. What a bastard. That poor child. Ugh. All of them. Okay, guys, so I'm going to give you a nice, neat summary of the weather events on Monday and Tuesday, August 13th and 14th, 2018. Uh, the weather was collected in Kinsburg. That is the closest historical weather data collection center. It is approximately 1.7 miles from Survey Ranch. Historical weather records indicate no rain on Monday, August 13th, and moderate rain, 0.3 inches, on Tuesday, August 14th, 2018. These uh, moderate rain continued for 30 minutes to 90 minutes and was followed by some sprinkles, shall we say. The winds were perhaps the more significant event, with moderate sustained wind from the hours of 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., with strong gusts of wind up to 53 miles per hour. I recall seeing a video um, that someone made when they were visiting that area, Survey Ranch exactly, they were, they were on exactly <laughs> the Survey Ranch property, in fact, um, and you know, they were just showing what it would be like to pick up the dirt and let it sift through your hands. You know, just visually you could see, you know, just imagining yourself picking up the dirt and it being that consistency, what the dirt might be like in that area. And it really looked more like dust, like a soft dust than dirt. And I mean, that's what it looked like to, I would imagine, just about anyone who um, saw this video that somebody took and shared. And that was also the account of the person that actually visited the Servi Ranch um, during the summer and, you know, dug into the dirt, to the earth with their own hands. So taking all of that into account, that is fact. We know what we know. We don't know what we know. So... I always suggest any information you receive from any source, question it, examine it, and be humble with it. How many times while we have been following the Watts case on YouTube have we seen people completely flip, change their minds on, you know, what happened? I've changed my mind on things, but you have too. It's not a judgment call. It's just what happens. So my suggestion always is be humble with any information you procure, receive, or discover on your own. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.
PC. No, it. no. He usually goes no, to bed at 6:30, so no, she just no, be daddy. No, no, daddy. No, no, daddy. <laughs> I don't know where you're going. You're gonna look at the stocks. No, then I did it. You did it. You did it. A daddy, do daddy it. Did it. Daddy, do it. Oh. Um, it starts at 6.30. They go backstage at 6.10, 6 o'clock, 6.15. I don't even know what time it is. It's 5.47, so we got like 15 minutes before they go backstage. So it should be interesting. Um, it's crazy because it would be funny if they go to school here. Because it's one of the two high schools they'll go to if we still live in this area. Ah, mommy. Ah, mommy. Ah, mommy. Ah, mommy. Hi, baby. Hi. Are you talking on the phone? Uh, I'm Pop Pop. You talking to Pop Pop? And Mommy. And Mommy? Yes. Yep. Uh, uh, mommy. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. That was quick. Hello. Say hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, bye. Bye. Look at her outfit. All right, we'll be back um, when the kids um, go on live. So um, hopefully keep them quiet for another 20 minutes. We'll see how that goes. Right, hey, her. Hey, um, girl, I wasn't going home. Kristen, if I would have went home, we would not have gotten back out here. So we grabbed them some food and came over here early. And this is what we're doing. Bella saving seats for Josie, Jolie, and Amelia. So we have seats, even though they're not going to sit in them. Say hi, Cece. She set my calendar. What are you doing? Uh, I got one. That one? Look at Bella. <laughs> See you soon, honey. Okay, say bye. 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 Hello. Hello. Hi. Who are you talking to? Bye. Bye. Who was that? Oh. Um. Mm, what are you doing? <clears throat> Bella. Oh. <coughs> You're so funny, Cece. Um. Can we say goodbye to everybody? Who are you texting? <coughs> say hi. <coughs> Bella. You okay? Josh. You hear Josh? Bye. <coughs> Cheese. Cheese. Daddy. Cheese. Cheese. She's a hot mess. Alright guys, I'll see you guys soon. We'll be back on here in about 20, 30 minutes. So, see you soon.